Okay, so the first thing we're going to be doing in Substance is importing our thin export that we exported from Blender. So we're going to go up to File, New. We're going to make sure our template is Metallic Roughness Alpha Blend. We're going to hit Select, and then we're going to look for that Blender export that we exported. And then let's change our document resolution to 4096 and our normal map format to OpenGL. Ensure that you have your UV tile workflow selected if you are going for a double tiling or anything more than two tiles in your UVs. So as per the tutorial, I have set it up for two tiles. So we're going to set it as use UV tile workflow and then hit OK. So from here, it's going to look pretty weird at first, but don't you worry, we're going to start to make it look really nice. So we're going to delete the space layer and then we're going to go up to our texture settings. Now yours might be in a different place, but just look for this little texture settings tab. And then we're going to scroll down and look for mesh maps and hit bake mesh maps. In here, we're going to set our output file size to 4096, leave everything else as is and hit bake selected. This can take some time depending on your PC, but once it's done, but we can get into texturing. We can now go return to painting mode and it should look a tad bit better. As you can see, we have our UVs on the right and then our 3D viewport on the left. So the first thing we can do is add in a denim material. So I'm just going to be using one out of the asset library. So you can just search denim and then drag and drop this straight into your layer. Now at first it will be very big, but what you can do is go into your properties for this layer and just increase the tiling. So I'm going to increase mine to about seven. That looks pretty good. And then what we're going to do is rename this to base layer one, and then we can duplicate this by right clicking and saying copy layer and then right click again and say base layer and then we can call this l2 from here we're going to add a black mask this will just allow us to essentially paint where we want l2 to be now in order to see where you're going to be painting we're going to hide base layer one and then we're going to go down to our properties of the paintbrush and just ensure that alignment is on uv and then we can start to paint around this triangle area that will be a different color once it's complete we can reveal the layer one and then we can go into our base layer one settings our properties and we're going to adjust the color so we want this to be a little bit lighter so let's bring it closer to the whites we can do that for both and as you can see it is a lot lighter i'm also going to change the color of the l1 layer just to make it a little bit darker so it's not so blue like that perfect we can now add a folder layer and just call this base layer and select both of these and drop it in there ensure that you save your file so we're going to go save as and just call this vrp week 001 and then we can continue the next layer we're going to be creating is a dirt layer so we're going to add a new fill layer and call this dirt and then we're going to right click and add generator we're going to click on our generator and then go to our properties and just type in dirt and drop us in under our material we're going to make sure that color is only selected and we can now start adjusting our properties so i'm going to set this around 0.64 i'm going to set the dirt level to around 0.64 contrast to around 0.2 the grunge amount to around 0.2 as well blending contrast we can leave as is edge masking can go down to around 0.4 and then we're going to set our blend mode to soft light and set this to around 50 percent the next layer we're going to add is a tool layer. This is going to be so we can adjust our denim properties so we can have different colors. And then we're going to make sure that color is the only one selected. We're going to right click and say add filter and we're going to add a gradient filter. So for this gradient filter, we're going to select three different colors. So the first one being our blue and then we can select a, a little bit darker blue and then we're going to set our blend mode to multiply. And then when we hide this, you can see that and then under our base color, we're going to add our denim to the base color and we're going to make sure that our tiling is set to the same as our base layer. So going back to our base layer L1, it's 0 0.67. So let's copy and paste that over to the tool and apply it and then when we preview it you can see that there has been some added color to our shadows it's just hide our base color so we can see that again and we can go into here and just tweak this and bring that back up i'm also just going to bring the opacity down a little bit to around 40 like so cool the next layer we're going to add is some wash so i'm going to call this wash layer one we're going to make sure that color is only selected again and then right click and say add filter and this is going to be gradient filter and then under our base color we're going to search in our asset properties we're going to search for cloud 
And then when we go to our textures, we're going to select cloud three and drag and drop this into our base color. This is going to add a washed effect to our denim. And then we can change our blend mode to overlay. And we should get a cool washed effect from there. We can now adjust the gradient of the wash. So we have three different colors here once we click on gradients. So we can just tweak this until we're happy with what we have. Kind of like that. And then I'm going to adjust my opacity of the blend mode. And then going back into our wash layer properties, we can adjust the parameters here to make it blend more and have more contrast. So depending on what the look you're going for, you can mess around with this. I'm now going to adjust the tiling of the properties of the full layer. So we're going to click on that and then go down to tiling. And if you make the number bigger, your pattern becomes smaller. And if you make it smaller, your pattern becomes bigger. So just fiddle around until you're happy with what you want. I'm going to set it to about 1.26 and then I'm going to carry on tweaking the blend mode to about 50%. And then I'm going to copy and paste this over so we have another one and then just tweak this and make that a tad bit smaller. Let's make sure we have this saved. The next layer we're going to create is a wrinkle layer. Now you don't have to add this if you don't want to, but I just, I feel like it adds some more wear and tear. In our asset folder, we're going to look up cloth. There are two options to go with, so I'm going to use cloth fold. Then I'm going to drag and drop this into our heart and deselect everything else except for our heart. Now, when we go to our tile, you can see that when you make adjustments here, you can see that more wrinkles have been added. I'm going to set it to around 1.9. It's pretty good. Once you're happy with that, we can go on to the next one. This is going to be an edge layer. So let's call this edge R1. We're going to right click and say add generator. And we are going to add a UV border. We're going to make sure that height is only selected in our properties. And then we're going to set our balance to about 0 0.1, a contrast to point. 0, 03 and our distance to point zero 05. We're then going to right click and say add filter and this is going to be a blur filter. This will just allow us to get rid of the intensity of the UV border distance. But before that we're going to change the UV border distance to linear dodge and then in our blur settings we're going to increase the blur to around 3. We can then copy and paste this and create a second layer. For this layer we're going to set it to color and we're going to hide our blur and make sure that our full layer is also color and we can adjust our blend mode to screen and then we can decrease the blend mode to around 10 11 and we're going to change our parameters to about 0 0.05 for the balance and then leave everything else as is i'm also going to change the full color to black and then we should start seeing some nice results on the edges there the next layer i'm going to add is puckering layer so we're going to call this puckering r1 and we're going to put this in a folder called puckering and then we're going to import the UVs that we exported from Clo. So remember we exported those normals, as you can see here. So we're going to drag and drop these straight into our asset folder. It's going to come up with this import resource. It says folder and make sure both of these are selected and they are changed to texture. And then we can import. And we're going to drag and drop these into normal. We're going to make sure that color is selected. And then we're going to drag and drop this into our base color. And we're going to change the blend mode to screen and then we're going to right click and add a generator and this is going to be our gradient we're going to right click and add a filter and this is going to be our gradient filter once again and then we're going to start adjusting these colors now you'll notice when you start to bring the blacks that your puckering will start to show a lot more so just do this until you're happy with the results i'm going to tweak color two and also color three it's pretty good and then we're going to change the puckering folder to overlay and you should start to see the puckering that we included just doing a little preview without you can see puckering nicely um, if it is if you think it is too intense you can always adjust the opacity of the screen layer so i think around 80 is good and then what i'm going to do to make the puckering stick out a little bit more i'm just going to copy this layer and paste it two more times and then we can recall this three and two then when we hide this you can see the difference okay last but not least we are going to do our stitching layer so let's add a new layer and call this stitching for this we can just select color and height and hide the rest and we're going to change the color to black we're going to right click add a black layer and this is going to allow us to add our stitching detailing now if you checked out my previous video there is two methods i'm going to be using for this so 
to get into that we're going to go to our assets and we're just going to search stitching or stitch and we're going to use a paint roller clicking on that and for this method you kind of it's a trial and error to see what size the stitching is so you can see if i draw there the spacing as well as the size um, but to make it stick out some more we're going to increase the height as you can see and then i'm just going to change the color to make it stick out a tad bit and then we're going to clear this mask to get rid of that and then we are going to adjust the size so for sizing i'm going to go with about a two let's check what that looks like so it's a lot smaller but the spacing isn't accurate just to make it stick out in the meantime i'm going to make it white then clicking back onto our mask we're going to increase the spacing to about four or five and when we draw again you can see the results are much better press ctrl z to go back and we're going to do one and i think i'm pretty happy with that so from here it's really up to you how you want to do your stitching i'm going to speed through this section i will be using two methods but we'll cut to that when i am i'm going to left click on my garment and then press shift and it should draw a line and then i can apply that all the way down as you can see so that's how i'm going to be doing the straight lines and then i'm just going to speed through this Okay, and then for the second method we're going to use for the stitching, I'm just going to do it around the zipper area here. We're going to be using the paint along part tool. We're going to use the same paint roller and keep the settings as they were when we were doing the brush. So going back to our brush, it's 1 for our size and 5 for our spacing. So let's go and set our size to 1 and our spacing to 5. Then in our 3D window, this is the only place we can do this. We're we going to click right at the bottom here and just start to apply this like so. And then once you're happy with your stitching, we can go to our export. So let's just save this. We're going to go file, export textures, set your path, your output directory to sub exports. And then for your template, we're going to be using PBR, metallic roughness, and then output, just go to metallic roughness and change your normals we're going to set it to OpenGL and drag and drop this straight in and hit rgb and then we can go back to settings and hit export and then we should have those 